All right, so at this time, I'd like to open up the floor for public comment. If everybody can be respectful of everybody's time, that would be great. During the March 13th town board meeting, town clerk, Ms. McLean, brought up her alleged concerns of several invoices. One had to do with the web administrator doing work that she claims was beyond the scope of this job description. I haven't seen the job description of the web administrator, but know that Mr. Bishop is a highly qualified computer expert, and we are fortunate as a town to have someone with so much expertise. And if someone in town hall had on this hide or remove files important to the operation of the town and Mr. Bishop's capabilities were needed in recovering these files, then the individual who caused the disruption should be responsible for the bill. Another invoice receiving attention was a Whiteman, Osterman, and Hanna bill for services rendered to Mr. Joyce, the supervisor elect. Mr. Joyce stated that he reached out to Ms. Whiteley as well as other elected officials to help with a smooth transition and received very little support. I applaud Mr. Joyce for reaching out and for being proactive in researching how to carry out his responsibilities as supervisor to Princetown. Ms. McLean took the time and effort to contact two outside agencies for opinions on this invoice. Did she make the effort to walk down the hallway to discuss this issue with Supervisor Joyce? <coughs> In reading the Gorman report available at the March 13th town board meeting, I noticed that Ms. McLean didn't scrutinize the Gorman invoices enough to determine that there were two separate bills, nor did she ever question the bills in public with Mr. Mora or former Supervisor Whiteley. I suggest that Ms. McLean discuss her invoice concerns with the proper personnel prior to the town board meetings to get answers to her questions rather than airing them out at the meetings. It seems like the town clerk has privileges of the floor throughout the meeting. I don't believe that this is acceptable behavior in her position as note taker for the town board. Um, on another issue, Mr. Edwards' criticism about the Gorman Group report seems to have been meant to distract the public from the basic issue here. Mistakes and oversights were made, but Mr. Edwards ignored the intent of the report. The intent was to get the information, analyze what happened, and take corrective actions. Actually, I believe that Mr. Edwards should have recused himself from this investigation due to conflicts of interest, the fact that two of his family members work in the town clerk's office. I see no evidence of personal attacks in this investigation, as Mr. Edwards implied. I do see a list of well thought out corrective actions on page 8 of the report. And I want to thank Council Members Esposito and Jerzinski for a thorough and objective report. I hope that the town puts the corrective actions into place as quickly as possible. In the same vein, I am concerned about Mr. Moore's comments during the second privileges of the floor regarding the Gorman Fiber Map Bill. He admitted wanting to hold off paying this bill in the hopes that Gorman would, quote, give us a break, close quote. In other words, reduce the amount of the invoice as they did last time. This wheeling and dealing is okay if the transaction involves your own personal property or business. To me, this is improper behavior when it involves town business. And I, I hope Mr. Mora has learned from this incident. Um, I also heard Ms. Wisely's, Ms. Whiteley's uh, talk against Supervisor Joyce's regarding missing <coughs> files. According to Ms. Whiteley, Mr. Joyce is mad at her because she, quote, dissolved her files into the appropriate departments, and most of them were in the town clerk's office, close quote. There is no good reason to dissolve anything in the supervisor's office, except to make sure that the incoming supervisor would have a difficult time getting up to speed on town issues. What was Mel thinking? These were supervisor's documents and should have been left for her successor. By dissolving these documents, she has jeopardized the functions of our town government. I wonder why Ms. Whiteley would purposely impair the ability of an incoming supervisor by making documentation difficult to find. 
If she had really cared for Princetown, she would have taken up Supervisor Joyce's offer to help make a smooth transition to the new government. Rather, she and others had the arrogance to actively, actively and passively throw up roadblocks to impede the progress of her town. This petty and unprofessional behavior must stop. Since the town clerk is aware of the location of many of these documents, she should make them available to Supervisor Joyce without delay so as to remove any further obstructions to Mike doing his job, and that is running the town of Princeton. In my opinion, Mike Joyce is doing a good job running our town in spite of the many obstacles thrown at him. With the support and assistance of the majority of the town board, he has rescinded the restrict restrictive three-minute privileges of the floor rule, is updating the ethics and procurement policies, has implemented the 284 highway agreement, he has directed the formation of a committee to resolve the speeding issues on two town roads and made sure that videos and minutes of town board meetings, as long as the financials, are posted on the town's website in a timely manner. I have found that he returns phone calls promptly and is open to discuss any concerns a resident may have. He is a proponent of open government, something we have not had in the past. There's a quote I found in a newspaper article that I would like to pass on. The quote is, you're going to meet a lot of people in your life. Some of these people you may not like. Just because you don't like them doesn't mean you have to work against them, close quote. And I would like to add, it should mean that you should work with them, whether it's business, home, or town. I believe that all town residents, town employees, and elected officials need to recognize the importance of civility and mutual respect we should have for each other. And we all need to work together for the benefit of our town. Thank you for this opportunity. Can we roll on a second? Um, so I to wait. Yeah, just wait. Just make yourself an argument. Yeah. My name is Timothy Ferrioli. I live at 2579 Linux Corners Road. Uh, I wasn't here on the March 13th meeting, so I don't know what was said about me. But I'd like Mr. Joyce to explain to me and to clarify uh, whatever he said. And what I'm talking about is I used to uh, volunteer to be the town's videographer, for those who don't know. And several people have come to me and asked me uh, what was said in our meeting, ours, meaning Joyce and myself, to make me quit being the town's volunteer videographer. We never had a meeting. There was no agreement. So I'm, I'm kind of confused on what was said. Um, and I don't know how to respond to him other than telling him that there was no meeting and, and there was no agreement. For those of you who don't know, I'm sorry if I'm uh, repeating what you've heard. Uh, shortly after the February 14th uh, meeting, I, I do know it was a Friday, uh, Mr. Joyce called me. <coughs> on the phone, and if I didn't thank you, I think I thank you, but thank you very much for calling me. Mr. Joyce called me and said that my uh, services as a volunteer videographer were terminated, um, that the town had been looking for and found someone that they were going to pay to do the job. Um, I relayed to Mr. Joyce that it actually works out pretty good for the town as far as uh, not missing any meetings to be taped because I'm in the process of relocating out of state and I did not feel that uh, I could meet all the obligations of videotaping the meetings uh, after this month. So it actually worked out for the town. But there was no agreement. There was no meeting. I was terminated from volunteer services. So uh, I don't know what was said. Uh, the people who Contact me and said they were going to be here to respond. <coughs> they should. So, at any rate, if you could please tell me what you said and uh, to explain, I'd appreciate it. Um, to the board. Uh, at the end of the February 14th meeting, towards the end, you responded or you stated that uh, I was questioning your character and I somehow hurt your feelings. Um, you know, I'm sorry, that is not my intent. 
honestly. My intent is to ask questions and get these questions answered. Um, I don't know what your intent is. You know, I'm sorry if asking why is a town paying a family $70, $80 an hour is somehow questioning your integrity. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if asking who owns the website that spreads your lies and propaganda is somehow questioning your character. That's not my intention. I'm sorry if me asking who leaked confidential and lies to the Gazette is somehow questioning your honor. That's not my intent. My intent is to ask questions and have these questions answered. But your intent, obviously, is to dodge these questions. All you have to do is just sit down and answer the questions that I'm asking. I get from Joyce, uh, send me a note, or I don't know, you tell me, from every single one of you on the February 14th meeting. Now is not the time. Call me, call me, email me. How many times do I have to go through that before you guys sit there and, and, and agree to answer the questions? I'll tell you what I'll do. When you guys are here, and you guys are here multiple times a week, all of you, you four, and, jo and Mr. Miller, while you're in your room, I'll set up my camera, I'll hand you the question. You can speak to the camera. You don't have to look at my ugly mug. You don't have to listen to my nasally voice. You speak to the camera, answer the questions, call me, I'll pick the camera up, I'll go on my way. I'll shake each one of your hands, I'll say thank you very much. And you won't hear a peep from me. What's better than that? Okay? Don't tell me six months from now. Tell me within the next week or two. That's what I'll do. How difficult is that to answer these questions? I keep saying, I'll debate you, I'll debate you, but nobody wants to. So please, by the end of this meeting, step up and say, solid day, where you, you, you don't even have to deal with it. You're going to just look in the camera and speak. I think that's fair. Honestly, I do. Um, so people... <laughs> On the same February 14th meeting, uh, some people wanted to know, well, not some, many, a lot. They come up to me in the beginning of March and ask me what was said between uh, Sandra Jasinski and myself and Lou. And so I'll, I'll address Sandra, first of all. And uh, to, to Joe, please don't take this personal, because this isn't. As a matter of fact, I have great respect for Sandra. I am not lying, it's not sarcasm. I am serious. I hold her high respect. And uh, I'll tell you why. Um, and the reason why this is relevant is because she's on a pee activist. So people want to know what the little tiff was. And it really wasn't a tiff, we just had a discussion. Her point of view and uh, what I think is reality. So, we talked about environmental issues. She said we, meaning you, her, and I assume Pat Bishop, although, you know, she didn't say Pat by name, but her name did come up, were proud environmentalists, and that she would support a moratorium uh, similar to Burn Knox Westboro used to do with only building 10 houses or less a year. And Sandra said that she would prefer if no houses. No building, period. It's on tape. So, um, with that, she confirmed that uh, everybody up there came into my house and lied to me about believing in landowners' rights. You obviously don't. So, I have great respect for her. Uh, she also believes that some obscure survey gives her the, the right to dictate to people on what they can do Tim, with can their I, property. Can I interrupt for a second? Yeah, go ahead. Um, typically the public comment now is, and, and I don't want to cut you off or anything, but at some point, you know, <clears throat> I'm supposed to be addressing the yeah. board. Well, it is, board, because this town is Sandra Jasinski is not part of board or part of town business. Wow. Well, well, it is part of the board and it is part of the business because you guys supported her for PIAC and it has everything to do with what you guys do. So I'm just telling, I'm just answering these questions. So with that, I'll just put it like this. I have great respect. I think she's wrong. I think she's arrogant um, to think that people give her a mandate or you guys a mandate to, to dictate to uh, 
uh, landowners what they can and can't do with their land. Simple as that. Um, people want to know Joyce. I mean, excuse me, Lou Esposito. Uh, at the end of February 14th, Lou, you know, some people came up to me and called me some choice name, saying I incited it. Others want to know what was said. Uh, all I can tell you is this. <coughs> Lou misunderstood what I said. He thought I said he did not have a building permit. I did not say that. I said he had a building permit. He just did more than what that building permit was allowed to. Now the reason why I bring this up, as me being a libertarian, I could care less what anybody does with a property. It's up to the landowners to do what they want on their property. But these five have held the previous administration up to the letter of the law. And I'm holding him up to the same letter and then the same standards as he's holding the previous administration up. So with that, I'm sorry, Lou. Uh, Lou, I did not uh, say what you thought I said. Okay? And as far as what he said, doesn't matter. Yeah, he did posture up. Uh, that's just, he, I could care about. Everybody gets angry. So, with that, uh, I was going to go into more, but considering that uh, I just got lectured to, so I won't. So, But I just wanted to do Lou. I know that I don't, I don't, uh, I, I don't, I could care about honestly. You know, it happened. So, so.